Welcome, friends. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, with another edition of Propaganda Watch. And this week, I am delighted to inform you about some very important news that I know you have seen covered ad nauseum on the 24-7 news cycle. No matter which of the controlled network news stations you're looking at, I know you've heard about this by now, because it is all over the news, breaking a structural re-evaluation of the collapse of World Trade Center 7 has been released by the Institute of Northern Engineering at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. I know you've seen this, as I say, but let's just put some of this on the record for those who haven't seen it. I'm reading from the project summary at the project's homepage at ine.uaf.edu. This is a study of the collapse of the 47-story World Trade Center Building 7, WTC 7, at 5.20 p.m. on September 11, 2001. The objective of the study was threefold. One, examine the structural response of WTC 7 to fire loads that may have occurred on September 11, 2001. Two, rule out scenarios that could not have caused the observed collapse. And three, identify types of failures and their location that may have caused the total collapse to occur as observed. And I'll let you read through the rest of that project summary. But of course, the key finding, the principal conclusion of our study is that fire did not cause the collapse of WTC-7 on 9-11, contrary to the conclusions of NIST and private engineering firms that studied the collapse. The secondary conclusion of our study is that the collapse of WTC-7 was a global failure involving the near simultaneous failure of every column in the building. All right, so some stunning stuff. And as I say, I know you've seen this plastered all over the news. Just for an example, let's turn to some of that news coverage and let's play a clip, say, from CNN about this remarkable news study. Wait, (laughs) just kidding. Of course, this story is not being reported anywhere in the controlled corporate media, as I'm sure you probably really have noticed. Over the course of the past few weeks, in the time when this study was announced, or the, uh, the release of the draft report of the study was announced, and today, September 3rd, 2019, as I'm recording this in the United States, it's September 4th, 2019, here in Japan, Today was the day of the release of that draft uh, report, which is now available for download at ine.uaf.edu from that homepage. Of course, it will be linked in the show notes for this edition of Propaganda Watch, so you can go and read through it for yourself. And there it is. It's a voluminous report with abstract acknowledgments, list of figures and tables, executive summary. There's an introduction, structural response to fire loading, evaluation of NISC collapse, initiation hypothesis, and then a simulation of the collapse of WTC7 with references. It's uh, over 120 pages, so happy reading. There's a lot to sink your teeth into there. If you are truly lost, I would suggest you go to that, uh, that project summary that we were reading from earlier, or there has been some coverage of this in the past, but as I say, there is no coverage whatsoever in the mainstream media of this pretty significant report from a major American university uh, that was, as I say, released in its draft form today for public comment. Not a single peep from the mainstream media. And can any of us say that we're surprised by this? Well, of course not. But That shouldn't be the point of this. We shouldn't simply shrug our shoulders and say, well, what else is new? We should interrogate that very problem, namely that some people out there in news world get to decide that this story of this draft report being released today is not a news story. It is not worth any attention, not a single report, not a single article, not a single word, not one letter of ink being spilled on this topic, not one second devoted to it in any news broadcast on any of the 24-7 cable news networks. Why is that? Who gets to decide that? This is an interesting, perhaps philosophical, but extremely important part of the propaganda puzzle. In fact, it's so important that it almost seems 
blatant when it is put in front of your face, and yet it is never put in front of your face. This is the journalistic equivalent of that economic concept that was articulated, of course, by Frederick Bastiat in his Parable of the Broken Window, The Seen and the Unseen. But here we're not talking about, in an economic sense, about opportunity cost and what we can never know how that money would have been spent if it was not spent to fix the broken glass. Well, now we have this problem of Well, what is news? And just because this particular event is not being reported as news, does that mean it is unimportant? Does that mean it is something that we should not give our attention? In this case, demonstrably not. We should be giving this our attention, but the news controllers will simply not report it. They they, they don't even have to refute a study like this. They simply have to ignore it. And ignoring truly newsworthy items is an incredibly effective tool in the tool belt of the propagandists. It requires them to do nothing. They don't even have to provide an argument as to why this is not important or why this study is flawed. They just have to ignore it. That's it. It's, again, such a simple tool, but such an effective one, because the vast majority of the public will never even hear about this. This will be the proverbial tree falling in the forest, and like so many other pieces of the 9-11 puzzle, it will just never be presented to the vast majority of the public, who will never hear about it, never devote a second's thought to it, and never have any feeling on it either way, because to them, it simply does not exist. Again, I think this is an important point, and one that we shouldn't just simply dismiss as, oh, just a truism or something. I think it goes to the heart of one of the key problems in this news world that has been constructed to us, and something that I've attempted to articulate a number of times in my work. For example, back in 2013, in episode 265 of the Corporate Report podcast, The Myth of Journalistic Objectivity, I attempted to make exactly, precisely this point. It is self-evidently the fact and the case that every single time you see a news report on television or on the radio or anywhere else that you encounter that information, it is subjective. It is coming from a worldview. It is politically informed. It does have an entire ideology and an idea behind it that is being pushed by the very existence of that news story. And again, this is a fundamental point. It isn't about people being bought or paid off or corrupted or colluding. It is the nature of the way that we convey information. So that, for example, when you watch a news report on TV, whatever that report might be about, it is coming from an ideological viewpoint insofar as some editor somewhere along the line has decided that this story should be reported on and not another story. So the idea of news itself is an ideological construction that, for example, we sitting in our homes need to know about the intimate details of a political scandal happening in Italy or whatever. If we see that on the news, then that is obviously something that someone thinks we need to know about. That in and of itself comes from a certain political ideology. And when, for example, someone does a random act of kindness for another person, well, that's not news. We don't talk about that on the news. Again, everything comes from an ideological perspective everything is ideologically informed in that manner. So even deciding what to cover and what not to cover is in and of itself an example of how journalism is not and can never be objective. And in a slightly different context, back in 2017, I returned to this topic in an important video that might have slipped under your radar. I will link it in the show notes along with everything else so you can go and watch it if you haven't yet. But it's a simple and very to-the-point video I made called The News is a Social Construct. It is used to program you. One of the booby traps that's implanted in our language is the term the news. As if there is one set of events that we can all universally agree upon are the set of events, the news, that took place today that everyone must talk about. Think about what that implies. Who gets to choose what is the news And why do we insist on everyone that we consider to be in the news sphere to talk about the same set of events? I bring this up because it strikes me that in the event of any major the news type of event, 
uh, people are always seeking my comment, my take on it, and that's understandable. I get why that happens, but I think there's something insidious to that phenomenon, uh, because in the alternative media, people like to think or believe, well, yes, the MSM propaganda media is going to cover the news this way. Well, we're going to show how they're lying or where they're wrong or where the agenda's gone. But it's still the fact that the MSM, the editors at, you know, MSMBS, get to set the agenda that everyone's going to talk about by presenting the news. This is an important point and one that shouldn't be glossed over too quickly. As I made the point explicitly in that video about the news is a social construct, when even people in the erstwhile independent alternative media are all talking about the same news subjects that are put forward by the propagandists in the mainstream media, then by that method, the propagandists control the field of discourse itself. They control what is and what is not talked about. And by doing so, they don't even have to deploy any of the tools in their propaganda tool belt that we examine here week in and week out at Propaganda Watch. They simply have to ignore a subject for it to go away. No logically fallacious arguments, no sleight of hand, no distraction, no, no technique whatsoever necessary. All they have to do is not talk about something. And they can guarantee not only will the vast majority of the public never hear about it, but the vast majority of the independent media will never even talk about it because it's not in the news. The news. What a dangerous and extremely effective technique that the propagandists have here for getting an important, an important study like what we are seeing coming out of the University of Alaska Fairbanks, um, getting it off of the news agenda altogether. So, as I say, I've talked about this before. I will put the links to those previous reports in the show notes so you can go check them out for yourself. But if you are interested in more actual information about this study and its significance in the context and the types of findings it's coming to, I will, of course, once again, recommend the project homepage at the UAF website, which will be linked in the show notes, as well as the draft report itself, which has just been released this is a news story, folks. This is news. But also, I will point you to a 2017 lecture that Dr. Leroy Holsey delivered at the Scheibel Auditorium at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, in which he articulated at that time the preliminary conclusions that his research team had come to and uh, illustrates that in a slideshow that I think is worthy of your attention. Also worthy of your attention is a post from Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth uh, from last month, but still relevant, I think, Building 7 study to be released September 3rd. I need your help to spread it far and wide, talking about uh, architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth and their efforts not only to spread news about this story and information about this incredibly important study, but also to organize presentations in Fairbanks, Berkeley, and New York, hold a major news conference in Washington, D.C. with the Franklin Square Fire Commissioners. Remember that important news story that similarly was not reported on? Uh, produce a powerful short video for social media, commission new YouGov survey, and more. So there are people who are making efforts to get this information out there, but if you step one step outside of that circle of, uh, of information, it's like you're in a completely different universe. So when we follow the news cycle, we miss important pieces of what is happening in the world around us. And worse yet, we allow the propagandists to win by default. The, again, they don't have to provide any argument. They don't have to do anything. They just have to not talk about it. Unless, unless enough people are talking about it, kicking up a ruckus, bringing this into the media spotlight, which is something that can be done, and perhaps we'll examine that in more depth in the future. But for the time being, as I say, I'll direct you to these various resources about this extremely important, extremely timely news story that, of course, is being completely ignored. Just another way that the propagandists continue to propagate their propaganda into the public consciousness and preclude real information from our consciousness. That's going to do it for today. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com. Since the day of 9-11, we've been told what happened. Freedom itself is under attack. 
We've been told who to blame. The Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Osama bin Laden. Terrorists and the terrorist network. Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. We've been told what to think. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. But if you haven't seen 9-11 Trillions or 9-11 War Games, you don't know anything about 9-11. Some might ask, how in the world could the Secretary of Defense attack the Pentagon in front of its people? We had four war games going on on September 11th. $8.5 trillion. The most extraordinary coincidences in the history of mankind. You've never seen so much real world stuff happen during an exercise. It, it is, um, I was going to say terrifying. 9-11 Trillions and 9-11 War Games. Watch the documentaries for free online, or, for the first time, own them on DVD today. Go to CorbettReport.com shop for details.